Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this important video today because we have some information that I want to bring to you to make sure that you are aware and that you know that we have to be preparing now because we are on our own here. And here's why we're going to be covering a couple of different topics in this video today. And I want to make sure that you people know what is going on out there because you're not being told this in the national media. I want to make sure that you and your family is being very well prepared and are prepared to take on this astronomical storm that we're going to be rolling into. And it all has to do with the food that you put on your table and what this means for you and your family. All right, so I'm going to start right over here with this article from Time. All right, now they are talking about in this article here, and all these articles will be posted in the description below so that you all can go in and read the whole articles if you wish and everything else. But here is why so many grocery stores staples are so expensive right now. We all know what we are paying when we walk in that store. It just pains you to go to the grocery store right now. It is just a daunting task because you know it's going to cost you a lot of money. Now, as in, right here in the beginning of this, this lady is talking about how her groceries have increased from $2,200 to $3,000 in recent months. That's a huge problem here, folks. But what we really want to get to is we want to scroll down. We want to talk about this right here. And what this is, it says, although overinflation is starting to cool, as they keep telling us, but we don't see any of this, shoppers haven't seen much relief in terms of grocery prices. And that is obvious, right? Which were up 11.8% in December compared with one year earlier. Now you see all these numbers and figures are all coming out as of the end of December. Once we get to the end of January, we'll get the updated January figures and see where we set. But I think we're going to be setting even a little bit higher and you'll see why here shortly just stick with me gone are the days when someone could walk into a grocery store and buy a dozen eggs for a dollar fifty and a gallon of milk for under three bucks instead nearly every food group costs more than it did a year ago grade eight eggs are up 138 percent you heard me right i said 138 percent Margarine is up 43.8%. Unbelievable, right? Butter. The sticks of butter are up 38.5%. That all-purpose flour that we all need to use if you want to make breads and pies and cakes and you want to fry things and everything else, that's up 34.5%. And everybody's favorite is your spaghetti and your pasta and your macaroni and everything else. That means everything from... Macaroni and cheese, uh, right on up to your spaghetti, linguinis, and all these different things. Those are all up 31.3%. And these numbers are all according to the most recent Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is a huge problem. Now, there's one sector that I'm throwing in here real quick because I'm loving it. All right. And I think you guys may too, especially all you men out there. All right, now, what we're talking about here is plant-based meats. Now, as of January 24th, 2023, these plant-based meat sales have fell like a rock and they're sinking to the bottom of the ocean. All right, and what does this mean for climate change? All of a sudden, now we're talking about a plant-based burger and what does it got to do with climate change? Who cares? All right. And here's the reason why. Now, you scroll down through. Just so you all do know, Bill Gates is a big funder of these plant-based companies. All right. He doesn't want us. He doesn't believe that we need to be really eating meat anymore. We don't need to be eating real meat anymore. We don't need to be eating real chicken anymore. There's all these conspiracy theories about him being behind the bird flu. Nothing can be proved, but I wouldn't push it past him. 
But here we go. Supermarket sales of refrigerated plant-based meats dropped roughly 14% in 2022. Wow. And restaurant sales, too, took a hit by nearly double digits. And Beyond Meat, all right, which this person has reported, a darling of Wall Street, those top products became, well, you know, everybody wanted those plant-based burgers. But now it has saw its stock plummet by 76% last year. And they were forced to lay off 20% of its staff. Now, I feel bad for the people that lost their jobs, but in a sense, you're trying to replace something that we don't need to replace. And the company is now valued at just $1 billion. A monumental fall from its $14 billion peak in 2019. And this is the reason why, folks, scroll all the way to the end of the article. Go all the way down. And this right here, this is what you want to see. 38% of the American people, that's how many Americans believe that the plant-based meat is a healthier alternative to real meat, according to a 2022 report from City Global Insight. And that is down from 50% in 2020. Maybe people are waking up. I don't know. I found this article quite interesting and I wanted to throw it in here. Now, we have to move over here to China because China is going to be trying to take our food and put it on their tables. And here's why. All right. China, you know, they got 1.4 billion people, right? They can't afford and they don't have the means to feed these people anymore. So guess who they're turning to? That would be us. They want to look at the United States now. They're saying, hey, feed me, feed me. You know, they want to, they want to take They want to buy all kinds of stuff, as you're going to see here in a second. But here we go. You know, I mean, the biggest thing with China is in this paragraph right here that we're going to talk about. It says, despite its domestic production, China has been a net importer of agricultural products since 2004. You see, this has been going on for a while. Their problem has been building, but they haven't done anything about it. You know, they've had all these different issues with, you know, they had the whole pork thing that went on. They had to kill off all the pork, the pigs and all that. They've had the bird flu over there and they had to kill off all their chickens. They've had very bad rice crops over the last few given years. But today it imports more of these products, including soybeans, corn, wheat, rice, and dairy products. More than any other country, between 2000 and 2020, the country's food self-sufficiency ratio has decreased. Now get this, folks, has decreased 93.6% down to 65.8%. They have problems in China. Changing diet patterns have also driven up China's imports of edible oil, sugars, meats, and processed foods. In 2021, the country's edible oil import dependency ratio reached a 70%, almost as high as crude oil import dependency. Unbelievable, right? Look at this chart. Shows you. You know, China has, has grown more dependent on foreign cereals since 2008. This is the cereal import ratio. All right. Now down in here, they weren't importing anything. 2002. Then all of a sudden, in, in 2004, it jumped up to 1.3%. And then it went flat again. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, it started to take off like a rocket ship headed to outer space. Maybe they're headed to the International Space Station that they want to build. 2015, it spiked at 5%. Then it dipped down again. And then it skyrocketed again right up here to 2020 to 5.1% of all cereal was being imported into China from America. You see, we are feeding the Chinese people. Now, 
something you people really need to be paying close attention is meat and poultry production to slow despite 2022's robust profits. And what they are talking about in here. Now, we all know what has taken place over the last few years with all the different closures because of the pandemic and problems in a lot of different meat packing plants and everything else. You guys can read this whole article. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this is what it's talking about. But in 2023, what they're talking, a, a trend likely to continue, okay? Because they're having a problem on the supply side of high cost of feed, labor, and construction support. We could see a higher price for what meat does make it to the store and less available products on the shelves when you go there. And what else is going on out here, folks? The bird flu is making your weekly food shopping more egg expensive. Yes, we all know about the, the whole prices of eggs and everything else and how high they have gone. It has gotten ridiculously out of control. You know, the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023, right now, the time we're living in, has witnessed the world's bird flu outbreak on record. The worst, resulting in supermarkets having to ration egg sales at the checkout and ramp up their prices by 60% in the U.S. and 27% over in U.K. over the past year. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to really help you know the the current outbreak has led to the death of 97 million birds globally and if not taken seriously can be fatal to humans too so see once they put that in there fatal for humans too you can kiss your chicken and your eggs goodbye until they can figure out how to get this under control if you do have your own chickens and everything else i would highly suggest that you do keep them inside because a lot of this is spread by wild birds so you want to make sure you're keeping them in their coops or wherever you have them a barn whatever keep them inside and just let them stay there because if your flock or something does come down with this you have to kill them all off and that could be very devastating to a lot of people. A lot of people are turning to a lot of different farmers that are selling chickens and chicken eggs from their farms. And, uh, you know, it's first come, first serve. And they're selling them a lot cheaper than what you can even buy them in the store. And to be all honest, if you can buy fresh eggs, there's a lot more that you can do with those to store those for long term. Now, right over here. We're going to end right here with the USDA and what they have to say about this year and the high prices and where we are headed. Maybe you want to turn away now because you're probably not going to like what I have to tell you. But this is why I'm telling you to make you aware, to give you the knowledge so that you can prepare. Scroll down. Just scroll right down. It's all highlighted for you right here. Food prices are expected to grow more than slowly in 2023 than in 2022, but still above historical average rates. In 2023, all food prices are predicted to increase another 7.1%, with a prediction interval of 4.2 to 10.1%. Food at home prices are predicted to increase 8% with a prediction interval of 4.5 to 11.7%. And if you want to go out to eat to your favorite McDonald's, food away from home prices are predicted to increase another 8.2%, with a prediction interval of 6.7 to 9.7%. The moral of the story here, folks, prices are getting out of control and China wants to take whatever they can from us. And you know our government will probably give it to them quite willingly. 
We saw why the meat prices and everything are really skyrocketing because of the price of the feed and everything else. And it's just all going to roll into one big snowball. The bird flu is also killing off millions and millions of birds. We can't catch a break and we can't catch up. And we're trying to make sure that people have chicken and eggs. And if you want them, it's going to cost you an arm, a leg, and a thigh. And then we had the USDA is telling us, prepare now, because here it comes. But did you hear this on your local news? No, you did not. We don't want to scare anybody. But why wouldn't we want to make sure that people know so maybe they can plan and maybe they can be prepared for the higher prices that are rolling down the road? And we didn't even mention anything about the high gas prices. Now, did we? So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for joining me on this video today. You all remember, it's right here in this purple outline. Everything is going up and you need to be prepared now. I just gave you the news. I just gave you the knowledge. Now it's your turn to turn around and do something about it before it's too late. So until next time, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I will catch you all on the flip side.